Bickley and Marotta mornings. Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Bickley Blast. Devin Booker is in the midst of a rampage. He scored 152 points in three games. That's over 50 a game, and that is the kind of heater that should rocket a man up the list of all-star balloting, except the Suns have only won one of those games. And in the case of Booker, it provides idiotic fodder for critics who like to claim that his scoring is superficial, like artificial, artificial sweetener, and that he's not a winning player we all know that's nonsense but just what they just when this team seemed to be gaining elevation the Suns are now back under a microscope they have three offensive superstars but have scored only 30 points in the fourth quarter of the past two games combined a couple of losses that are like recurring warts on the back of your hand the turnover issues giving up offensive rebounds struggling to get free throw attempts and struggling to make the ones they do get but more to the point are the end game performances an issue we had hoped that had evaporated with a pair of magical comebacks against the kings and the bulls instead we've got a basketball team that still seems to have some blind spots and some huge gaps in the program the kind that can be only covered up with transcendent performances and once again our basketball team has regressed apparently stuck on a troubling premise Namely, hero ball can be a lot of fun to watch, but it's hard to sustain, and these days, it's really no way to win a championship. All right, today's Bickley Blast brought to, you by, brought to you by my great friends at Chapman BMW, who make luxury attainable. Find them online at ChapmanBMW.com. Just in a, in a zone, um, just trying to hoop, trying to win. That was Devin Booker. He was uh, pretty short with his answers, which usually indicates a He's kind of frustrated yeah. basketball player. He was in the zone. Uh, 44 points on the heels of a 62-point night uh, on Friday. And he's got two losses to show for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, this has not been a Devin Booker problem by any stretch of the imagination. You hit on some of those things that have been problems. And let's go back to Friday night in Indianapolis. One of the big refrains from Suns fans was, and it was an issue, there's no doubt about it, the lack of whistles that Booker and everybody got in the fourth quarter. They, Indiana did not have a team foul in the fourth quarter. That means zero free throws in the mm-hmm. fourth quarter. That mm-hmm. can bog down your offense, especially when you're trying to protect the lead. Mm-hmm. Last night it wasn't much better. Orlando, again, cranked up the physicality, used their size, mm-hmm. frustrated the Suns, kind of uh, coerced them into some things they didn't want to do, but did it by committing two fouls. Yeah, Devin Booker shot two free throws in the fourth quarter. That was it for the entire Suns team. So 30 points in the last two combined fourth quarters and only two of those points coming from the free throw line. Yeah, now listen, you know how I feel about this. Um, I I cannot stand the hyper-focusing on NBA officiating. To to me, it turns a great sport into grievance ball, and I do not want to listen to grievances all day long during broadcasts while I watch an NBA team. That being said, there are issues, but I, but if you are solution-driven, because, yeah, a, a basketball team should be out the free-throw line in the fourth quarter, and if they're not, then you're in one of those games. But the way out of one of those games is to match the other team's physicality or, better yet, exceed it. Because if the referees are in this state of mind where we're not going to call everything, so we're going to let more than we should, and you as a basketball team, you've got two options. You can get real angry and complain about it, which Frank Vogel has been doing a lot after games, or you can up your physicality and match that and take advantage of that. Use use the referees to your advantage. There's no other way out of it if you're looking for solutions. If you're looking to, to complain, if you're looking for grievances, have at it. You're, yeah. you, you've got a ton of them there for you. Well, but if you're looking for solutions, that's the way out of it. Along those lines, that might be one of the most disappointing things is last week we were talking about in the Chicago game, the Suns getting poked by the Bulls and Andre Drummond kind of, kind of lighting a fire under mm-hmm. the Suns and how they responded. The very next game to open up the road trip in Dallas, you saw the Grant Williams example. Grant Williams was... Uh, on his antics, I think, as as Devin Booker put it, and didn't want to play basketball, the Suns responded to that. Um, now, there wasn't – I guess there was the incident uh, on, on Friday night, and, you know, the crowd turned on Devin Booker in Indianapolis after the elbow um, to the to the 
groin area of Aaron Neesmith that didn't get called. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, you know, I it probably was an offensive foul. Honestly, it was a missed call by the officials. I thought it was highly embellished by Neesmith, but he used that opportunity to embellish it. They showed the replay. The fans got behind it. It might have changed the course of the game, but, you know, when Bradley Beal, I, I think what Miles Turner did to Bradley Beal, they'll never admit it, it was retalia- retaliatory in nature. Mm-hmm. He disguised it well. I think there was purpose behind that elbow. I really do. Mm-hmm. And it messed Bradley Beal up, not mm-hmm. only for the rest of that game, and credit to him for coming back. I agree. He is finding himself right now because he's got to deal with breathing issues. And that mask, I, I'm not sure where that mask came from, and I know you have Bob to— Bob Cousy's locker in 1951. <laughs> That's funny. Now, that is from. funny. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least it didn't come from Jason from Friday the 13th. Yeah. Yeah. Go back. I believe you better. In right. Suns history, there was a player in the 70s named Curtis Perry who broke his nose or broke something in his face, and you can find pictures of Curtis Perry wearing, like, a Jason Voorhees hockey mask. That's funny. That he might that's have been funny. better off a, with that. That's funny. Because it, it was not working. Yeah, no, listen, it, it's – I don't know if you've ever messed around and tried to wear one. A, a, a buddy of mine had an issue and he played basketball. And he said, dude, try this. And I'm like, okay. And, you know, I know it's – yeah, it's probably pretty gross, right? But I tried it in a pickup game. It's impossible. I don't know how NBA players even can it, it, it operate. It's the breathing, the sight, the sweat – it fogs up. Fogs yeah. up. It's just, it's a nightmare. Yeah. I've got a lot of respect for Bradley Beal. After I saw that incident on Friday, I thought he's going to be shelved for a while. Because that, so. that was a vicious elbow. I was shocked to see him come back yeah. in the game. And, and for him to give it a shot yesterday, um, I'm like, okay, dude's got some toughness. Good to see. That's good to know. Yeah. yeah. He uh, talked about the fourth quarter issues last night as well. I mean, I don't take anything away from them. They're a very talented group. I think we kind of shot ourselves in the foot, personally. Uh, I think we... We just didn't have. We, we just lost our energy. We lost our focus in the second half. We just weren't there for whatever reason. You know, we kind of just discombobulated really quick. And they're a really good team. They play hard. Uh, they play aggressively. They defend well. They rebound well. Hell, they had 20 more shots than we did. But uh, I mean, it's just a testament to how hard they play. You know, but they have good size, like you said. I mean, uh, I mean you definitely credit that because they utilized it. They got in paint. They abused it. Kill us on the boards. Yeah, that is math that doesn't work out when you're turning the ball over as frequently as the Suns are and you're failing to keep opponents off the offensive glass. You, you get 20 more shots against you, you're mm-hmm. going to lose. You're going to lose. It doesn't yeah. matter what you do yeah. because, again, the Suns shot the ball incredibly well for three quarters last night and the fourth quarter was terrible. But after the first quarter last night, the Suns lost the next three quarters. They got outscored after the first quarter by 26 points. So, again, it is trying to put something resembling four solid quarters of basketball together, which has been an issue for this team for quite some time. Yeah, and and the only thing troubling about this, now, the the Pacers game, look, I I think that the fourth quarter, when you distill and you get by the officiating woes in that game, the the fourth quarter issues propped up in that game as well. The defensive issues propped up in that game as well. I had really hoped that the team during that winning streak had kind of developed a a sturdier persona, and you remember me raving about them last Mm -hmm. week, that they kind of were getting a little hardcore, kind of getting an other their team's heads and being very resilient and, and being very stoic and I, I I hope that we're not dealing now with with the like you know uh, dealing with illusions that that what we saw w- was were the exceptions and not the norm you've got an interesting game tonight because the heat have been struggling mightily mm-hmm. they're trying to get uh Terry Rozier acclimated mm-hmm. to their team they've had mm-hmm. some injury problems as well but whether well, they lost six in a row yeah. Yes. Went into tonight's game. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then you've and that's got, with Jimmy Butler back. And yeah. then you've got a couple of winnable games, right? It's the Wizards and then... The Wizards at the tail end, and there's one one other one. There's one other Brooklyn. one. Brooklyn and Atlanta. Yeah, and that's then it. Washington. That's it. Okay. okay. So, it, so, it, so there's still a chance to come back from this road trip and go, okay, this was, this was, this was good. Yeah, if this you come eight. back five yeah. and two, even with the ugliness that's of these fine. last two, yeah. that's... Yeah, you'll, it's you'll still, though, tonight's time. the second half of a back-to-back featuring... You know, we already were saying Kevin Durant looked fatigued yesterday. Yeah. He has to play better because you can't get 70 points from Booker. My prediction is uh, Durant scores over 40 tonight. Ooh. 
Yeah. I don't and, know if it means they win, but Well, no, you're right, but but this is the the thing you talk about the unprecedented unprecedented nature of the Suns having six consecutive games of four a uh, score with 40 or more points. I I don't see that ending anytime soon. I mean, with the lack of production they get from the bench, I I would like to see it more evenly spread yeah, out. Yeah, same. Like 30, how, 25, and 25. That'd be fantastic yeah. because it seems like in this run, especially these last two games, when you got one guy going off, there's a lot of standing and watching going on, mm-hmm. and others lose confidence mm-hmm. or defer too much. And the overpassing. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.